Your future is in your hands right now. What you do with your money at this very moment determines how your future looks down the line. So who do you listen to? Do you listen to, you know, Aunt Susie who has this comfortable life in retirement, she has all of her bills paid and she gets by, she can go to the movies and go out to dinner, but that's really about it. Or do you listen to your buddy's uncle or dad who owns a business and when it's dumping snow in the winter, they're in a private jet flying down to Florida. Who do you listen to? And so today, I wanna to be able to help settle that or at least give you a different perspective than what you're used to because there's so many people grabbing for your attention on what do you do with your money because everyone wants a piece. So what do you do? My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and in today's video, I wanna share with you who's right about your money, Grant Cardone or Dave Ramsey? See, if you're familiar with these two names, you know that they're pretty much on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Dave Ramsey, from a high level macro view, is he's all about, you know, get out of debt and not have any debt and be able to go from there. Grant Cardone's the pure opposite. He's saying leverage debt, use debt to create this abundant life that you want. So who do you listen to? So before I go into that, you have to know something about me first, because I picked these two people out of everyone out there in the marketplace that you can listen to because they're the biggest ones. They're the ones that most people are listening to now that are speaking the loudest, calling for our attention. And I remember over a decade, probably a little bit more, I think it is now, uh, I was over, I think I was about f almost $40,000 in credit card debt. I say over 30,000, but almost $40,000 in credit card debt. I didn't have hardly any money coming in. I was in network marketing. I didn't have a job. I was eating cheese and ketchup sandwiches to survive while I was living in San Diego with four, or excuse me, six other people in the same house. I had the coldest room in the winter and the hottest room in the summer. And needless to say, it wasn't the nicest place to live. And so I just had to figure out, you know, what am I gonna do with my financial future? Like I was in the hole, had no money coming in, so what do you do? And what I started doing was kind of applying without knowing the Dave Ramsey model. I started just doing everything I could to get out of debt, right? Because I had to do a lot of sacrificing. There was a lot of times where I didn't go out to eat with friends. They would go snowboarding, I wouldn't go. They would take trips, you know, to, Texas or Vegas or wherever, Florida, spring break, and I couldn't go. I didn't have the money, I was broke, right? And then I had this mountain of debt that I had to kind of get off my plate, or at least that's what I thought I needed to do. And then I had mentors on the other hand say, look, just focus on building your network marketing business and all of a sudden you'll be able to out earn the problem. And then I was like, oh, I got these successful people telling me this. I got other people saying, you know, pay off your debt so that you don't have to worry about it anymore and cure interest. And so I had this like mental tug of war. Have you ever experienced that? Like I didn't know what to do. I knew what I had to do something, but I just didn't know what to do. And so what I decided was I was just going to pay off the debt, right? I was just so torn and plus the network marketing, while I had decent success, I wasn't making, you know, five, 10 grand a month or anything do doing that. And I was just like, I was kind of getting over it and I wanted to change. I wanted to do something different, but I just knew I had it on my heart to help people. So I sacrificed and I paid off my debt. I made a small investments and I started building business and I started getting into the coaching world, but that doesn't pay off right away, right? And so I started doing that and over time I climbed out, I started having, I got debt free, I started putting money away and then I started to invest, right? And that's when things started to change. But here's the deal. You, are you like Dave Ramsey where you're just hoarding your money or you're paying off debt and then hoarding your money? and maybe investing a little, or you like Grant Cardone who has a different philosophy, who's like use debt, leverage debt, right? Because you're requiring assets and mainly in real estate. So what I wanna do is just share with you really quickly the difference between Grant Cardone's philosophy and Dave Ramsey's philosophy so that you understand. So here we go. So Dave Ramsey's philosophy or investing philosophy is this. First, you need to get out of debt and save up a fully funded emergency fund. So if you're in $100,000 credit card debt or you have $100,000 in just overall debt, student loans, credit cards, personal loans, right? His philosophy is pay all that off. Pay off your car, pay off your house, pay off your land, pay off your RV, everything. Then start creating this emergency fund, right? 
And while that's smart, because you definitely want an emergency fund, I highly encourage emergency fund, but anywhere from two to 12 months, depending on your psychology and you know, how, like, do you stress out if you don't have money, you know, enough money in the bank? Or if you're just like, hey, I'm one of those guys or girls that <clears throat> I can be able to produce the income that I need when I need it. So that's the first thing. Then he says, invest 15% of your income in a tax favor, uh, favored retirement account. And so sometimes people can't afford 15%. He wants you to work up to that, but if you're trying to do that right out of the gate, you might find that you're in a, uh, a tight hole, depending on where you're at. And But I love the fact that when he says this, he's talking about a percentage and not a certain amount. And so depending on where you're at, you might need to increase your income to start putting away 15% because, or even lowering your bills to do that, okay? Um, he said invest in good stock mutual funds, okay? You know, we hear a lot of things out there that mutual funds are crap nowadays. Now you get to pick and decide. I don't think I have too many mutual funds in my portfolio, but if you do, that's great on you. I would lean more towards the index funds, but that's up to you. You guys get to decide, but that's Dave Ramsey's philosophy. His also is keep the long-term perspective which I love, this is something I do love, like you're investing for the long term, right? You want that long term success. However, the challenge I have is, I don't wanna go snowboarding when I'm 60. I wanna go snowboarding now in my 30s. I wanna have fun, I wanna travel, I wanna see the world, not when I'm 60, but in my 30s, right? So that's one challenge there, but the long term perspective is great. You wanna have that because we're not just here to live in the moment, you gotta prepare for the future too. Because my generation and all the generations after me, especially my kids, there's no pensions, there's probably gonna be no social security. So you gotta start putting away for your future now, sooner rather than later. And we all heard the study that you know someone putting in at 20 years old versus 30 versus 40 they're gonna have a different end result right because of the compound effect like Warren Buffett says the eighth wonder of the world is the compound effect so that's it <clears throat> know your fees he talks about that so with that being said you also he also says work with a good financial advisor I'm all about financial advisors I would just include in there a fiduciary someone who has the obligation to do what's best for you and not what's best for them highly encourage you to look at what a fiduciary is, uh, questions to ask. There's a great book called Money Master the Games. I'll put it in the link below for you guys to be able to check out. And they talk about fiduciaries in that book a lot. So I highly encourage that. So Dave Ramsey's more of the reserve type, right? Pay off all your debt, then have an emergency fund, then start to invest, but invest for the long term, right? And so you can retire, right? You, that's important. You, If you want to retire, some people, they don't. They love what they do and that's great. So that is the Dave Ramsey's philosophy. Now, let's go on to the other side of the spectrum, which is Grant Cardone. So Grant Cardone's known for being the real estate guy, right? Like he has Cardone Capital that he builds his real estate portfolio. He has over a billion dollars in assets acquired uh, and managed. And he also, uh, with that being said, he also allows you, the general public, whether accredited or non-accredited investor, and if you don't know what that is, you may wanna look up the requirements for that. However, he allows people to invest in his deals so that you can get a cash flow each month, which is pretty cool. But let's look at Grant. Grant's first thing is, if you're going to kind of get ahead and what to do with your money first you got to create a business you got to start a business and he says that you want to be able to create a business that actually allows you to cash flow to make money that starts to produce this green stuff so called cash right so you want to be able to do that then he says it's got to grow it so it throws off a lot of cash now a lot of cash is subjective it's really up to you but I would say that's at least profiting you know um, 50 grand to a six-figure seven-figure annual profit so you want to be able to have something that you can profits because you want to take that money take that cash um, which is rather uh, tax highly should I say and buy income producing properties with it which converts the face value of cash flow into a much lower real estate tax bracket and so what you want to do is take the money you're earning put it into real estate so you're not getting taxed as much because there's a great tax advantages in it and then you will also own an asset right so your business is producing money you're buying real estate with it and you're getting lower taxes you're taking advantage of the taxes and then all of a sudden 
you're going, you're, uh, you're being able to take that money, add more and more into real estate as time goes on, and acquire more assets. Um, also, the cash flow may seem a little less than what maybe some people predict or think, but it's more stable, he says, and meaning that the equity uh, it collateralizes is safer, right? Because we build equity as the mortgage goes down. Um, you know, also as uh, time goes on, it starts to appreciate more, and then all of a sudden, depending on the market, you could even raise rents, right? So not only is your mortgage going down, but your appreciation going up over time and your rents go up over time so you start to create this difference right in the equity of it and so you own assets so that's grant grant is all about it he's like if i can leverage money other people's money to go make money <clears throat> that's amazing right because if grant cardone can go ahead and I don't know, get a hundred million dollar apartment complex under deal, right? Like under his um, under his company, right? Cardone Capital, if he can lock that in and then pay investors their money back every month and he can pay the mortgage every time that the bank requires it on the first of the month and he cash flows after that because everyone's, you know, the rents that are being paid, he can cash flow $30,000 a month. That's amazing. Right, so you have two different perspectives because in Grant's perspective, he's living thirty thousand dollars a month. Yeah, he has more debt, but that's good debt. He's leveraging the debt because what's the likelihood that people aren't going to live in his apartment complex, especially if it's nice and it's renovated and fixed up, right? And it's in a great location. We talk about in real estate location, location, location. So who's right? Right? Like, yeah, it sounds great for Grant, but he has a lot of risk for the most part. And with Dave, he's more certainty driven where he doesn't have the high risk because there is no risk. He owes no one nothing. Imagine what it would be like to owe no one nothing. So he has a different perspective than Grant. They're on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So who's right? What do you do? Well, I'll tell you this. I just got off the coaching call a little bit ago with a client who asked this exact question and we coached around it and I was like, I'm making a video, a YouTube video, just on this topic using Grant and Dave Ramsey. Now, I'll share with you my perspective and where I sit and, and uh, what I'm doing, but first, I wanna ask you to help you. You gotta know first and foremost, you gotta know what's my outcome? What's my outcome? What, do, what kind of life do you want? What is that? Because some people, they want to fly in private jets. Some people, they want to just make sure that all their bills are paid and they just want to live a comfortable life and, and in anywhere and in everything in between. And neither one is right or wrong. But that's not the only thing. you got to get clear on what kind of life you want and what that's going to look like and cost, right? But you also got to know by when. Right, And as I was sharing with my client today, you could say, oh, I want a $10,000 a month passive income. Well, that's great. If you want that in 10 years from now, well, just go, if you want to play in a real estate vehicle, just go get a house once a year, buy one house a year, that cash flows $500 a month, and in 10 years, you'll have a $5,000 a month cash flow. Sorry, I should have used a $5,000 a month cash flow example, right? So you would have $5,000 a month if, you, if that's your goal. And if you want to hit that in 10 years, awesome, you just did it. But if your goal is this time next year, to get a $5,000 a month cash flow, you have to bring a different approach. You have to do a different vehicle. It's gonna take a different path. And that might be you go buy a $2.5 million apartment complex where after you pay off investors, because you don't wanna use your money, right? But you pay off the investors and you pay for the mortgage and, and all the buffer and all the people, all of a sudden you got five grand left over. And if you can qualify and make that happen, you just created that in less than a year. So everyone's goal is different. You gotta get clear on when, what do you want and more importantly, by when? Because that determines what type of vehicles you use. <clears throat> which brings me to the second point is, what vehicles do you use, right? In order to identify which vehicles you're gonna use, you gotta look at what's your risk tolerance, right? Like how much are you willing to risk versus how much do you really wanna be secure? Right, you gotta get clear, what are those percentages, right? Like for me, I'm 70% risk, 30% security, sometimes I waver 60, 40, but then you gotta decide, okay, well, what's it? What's considered a risk, right? Like stocks and options are a risk for me, right? And then security might be bonds, right? I think security for me is real estate, 
right? I think it's a very secure thing, um, especially depending on how you buy real estate because there's different ways that you can buy real estate. So you gotta decide which vehicles are you gonna use, but based on your risk tolerance. So I know people, all they do is they do stocks and options. And a lot of people, some people I know, they do only options, which is great for them. If they know that they're master of it, great, but I would put that in a high risk tolerance uh, category of that individual. But you gotta know yours. So you might do a little bit of stocks, you might maybe play into uh, options, but maybe you do real estate, and maybe you have your own business. Right? You can diversify, but you gotta figure out which vehicles are you gonna use to start getting you to that outcome and what you do with your money. Now, based on what you want, your outcome, you may wanna pick a role model of someone who's doing that. So for example, if I wanted to be flying in private jets and I wanted to be financially free above and beyond, I would pick Grant Cardone, right? Because I would say, okay, I'm gonna use vehicle, or excuse me, real estate as my vehicle, and I'm gonna start doing apartment syndications. I'm gonna look for deals. I'm gonna know how to evaluate deals, how to negotiate deals, how to negotiate or to pull investors and do a syndication and, and all this stuff, these things that need to happen for you to be able to do what Grant does. And so you'd have to start working on those skill sets. But if I was like, hey, you know what? I just wanna be able to live comfortably. I want my bills paid. I just wanna be able to hang out every day and watch TV and just go out to eat. Then awesome, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow Dave Ramsey's model, right? And then 20 years, 30 years, I'll be able to retire and have a nice life. So really, you gotta get clear on what's the best vehicle for you to achieve your outcome in your time frame, because certain vehicles aren't gonna get you there, right? Like if you're gonna use real estate, you can have the, I don't know, the Honda, right? Because I've had a Honda before. Or you could have the Lamborghini, which I haven't had, but I could have one if I wanted one, but I don't know why I would. I would just be dumb with my money. So anyway, or I could have the Lamborghini, right? One's gonna get you there a lot faster. One's gonna get you there pretty well, but just not as fast as the Lamborghini. You gotta decide what's your time frame. So Grant is a great individual to follow, right? The model, his, he's like, let's build a business. Let's get that cash flow going. Let's be able to pour it into real estate to have that security, that equity, that appreciation that cash flow, right? The, the certainty with the assets. But you might be someone like Dave who's just like, let's be debt free. We don't owe anyone nothing. We are in charge of our life. We owe no one nothing. And we're gonna start putting away for our future and eventually we'll retire, but we'll be comfortable because we won't know anyone anything and we'll have this money. And hopefully it's a lot depending on how you invest and where you invest, right? And so Grant's Real Estate, um, Dave is more on the mutual funds and putting it in your portfolio. Well, those are great. I even know Russell Brunson, he says, screw real estate and stocks and options. Go in and build marketing, do marketing and funnels, right? So you gotta decide what's your vehicle, but you gotta know what you want and then what time frame because that helps the, you determine which vehicle to choose to get there. And also, does that match your risk tolerance? How much you're willing to risk versus how much you want to be secure? I often get asked, Joe, what do you do? And I want you guys to know I'm no financial advisor or planner or anything like that. This is purely what I do. I'm not saying you need to do it. And what I've done in this last year specifically is I've gotten very clear on what's my goal, what do I want to create, and cash flow coming in each month. And I'm I'm really uh, clear on what's the vehicles that are gonna get me there, right? That's the biggest thing. And so for me, I play in stocks. I don't play in options, although I want to. I don't play in options at all right now. That'll be in the future, but I gotta master stocks. So I'm learning stocks right now. I'm a novice, I'm not an expert. You know, I found a great mentor and I'm working and learning from him. And so I highly encourage you, if you guys wanna have success, you may wanna look at him. Um, I'll be honest, I'll put the link below, but I learned from me, Kevin on YouTube, right? And so I bought a stock course, I'm learning that, I'm learning technical analysis, I'm look, learning fundamental analysis. So it's, it's a big learning curve and people go to college for a lot of this stuff and they learn over time and it's a lot to digest all at once. So I'm playing in that. I'm also playing in crypto which I'm gonna share with you. I use a platform uh, that I'm gonna share with you. It'll be in a link below. If you wanna play in crypto, what exchange do you use? I'm gonna put a link in there. It's a referral link. Yes, I can make money off of it and the Kevin thing, but I share because I want you to be guys to have something if you're new to the game. Because this year I learned that you need to get into the game. If you're not in the game, you're not gonna be able to win. You're not gonna be able to accelerate your results, right? So I'm always sharing with my clients. Are you playing offense or are you playing defense? 
And there's a time and a place to play defense, like get in your insurance and you know uh, making sure all your assets are protected. But then you got to play offense at some point if you want to speed up your goal, right? At least. And so I play in crypto, and that's extremely risky. It's a wild, wild west. I made a video around that. So if you guys go check out that video, and then from there, what I've done is I've actually gone and started getting pre-qualified for real estate, looking at buying a duplex here, working on looking at a couple apartment deals that we're looking into that have about 36 to 42 doors. We'll see how that deal goes, but that's my focus. Now, I'm not gonna be able to do a four to three, five million dollar deals unless I get investors. And you know, I am gonna be looking for investors in the future. So if you're someone that's looking to invest, we may wanna talk or partner or something like that. We can talk around that, but that's what I'm doing. So stocks is a big one, crypto is another big one, and real estate's a big one. And then lastly is Master Life by Design, coaching, building out courses and stuff like that. I'm focused on Master Life by Design because that's my passion project. That's what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. Like I love helping people turn their lives around or have them think differently, right? Just like I shared with you some of these things today in this video on how you can think differently on who to follow, Grant or Dave Ramsey, because they both have opposing views. And so I kind of have a mixture of them, but I'm leaning more a lot, I think I'd say I'm 65, 70% more towards Grant Cardone than I am Dave Ramsey. So <clears throat> that's kind of how I play the game. And I'll make adjustments, right? As you go along this journey, you're gonna make tweaks and adjustments. Deals are gonna come up, opportunities are gonna rise. Your focus, your life circumstances are gonna change. You gotta be able to change accordingly. Change those dials to make sure that you stay on path to hitting your goal. Because when a rocket shot to the moon, 97, 98% of the time, 99% of the time, it's off course. It's constantly recalibrating, get it back on course. You need to do that too. It's not like you just put a stake in the ground and say, here's what I'm gonna do. And then, you know, everything falls in line with that. You're gonna have challenges along the way. At every new level, there's a new devil. For those of you that are playing in stocks, you're gonna be like, wow, I made six figures this year in stocks. That's awesome, you know, virtual high five to you. But then all of a sudden, Uncle Sam comes and says, where's my money? and that the, you're gonna have to pay you know, 25, 30, $40,000 in taxes or more, right? And so there's always a new devil at every new level. So anyway, figure out what's gonna, what is it for you? Who do you need to follow? Who do you resonate with more? Dave Ramsey or Grant Cardone? Like which one is it for you? And that's based on what you want in your life. So you gotta get clear. Most people, they're not clear. They're just saying, oh, I don't wanna work and I just wanna be able to retire. They don't know when, how they're gonna do it, where they're going to live, what type of home they're going to have, how much money they're going to have left over at every month, what impact are they making, if any at all. They're not clear. So if there's one thing you can do, go get clear after this video because I promise you it will determine which vehicle you use and based on your risk tolerance to say, do I really want to be in that vehicle? Because it might be great to have a, you know, a Lamborghini, but you're also going to risk that you got to pay expensive oil changes and brakes and all that. And do you want to take that risk in having all that happen, maybe even all at once, right? So anyway. Look, if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below, where are you? Are you more on the Grant Cardone side or the Dave Ramsey side? Who do you think's right and why, right? I really think, you know, the lifestyle I want, I'm leaning more towards Grant. I think Grant's great. I do see great stuff with Dave and I was on Dave's path for a while, but then I shifted. So what is it for you? Comment below, I would love to know. And lastly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're doing three videos a week coming at you. So areas of relationship, business and finances and personal development to make you a better person, a better business owner, so that you can create the life that you want and master life by design. So with that, I'm Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.